Spurge here with Rebzilla, and today I'm in Philadelphia with a brand new Indian Chief Dark Horse. Now, what you need to understand is that Indian has introduced three different versions of the new Chief. The one that I opted for is the standard Chief. You've got mid controls, solo seat, mag wheels, and a wide, low slung handlebar. There's then the Chief Bobber, which is going to give you classic bobber styling, wider spoke wheels, forward controls, and a mini A handlebar. And for you touring riders out there, there's the Super Chief, which is gonna come with luggage, windscreen, as well as comfortable accommodations for you, as well as a passenger. All of these models will have up-spec Dark Horse and limited versions, which will bump you up to the massive 116 cubic inch air-cooled V-twin that you're gonna see right here, as well as a four inch touchscreen dash with ride command. Now all the Chiefs will carry the model year 2022, making this the 100th anniversary of the original Indian Chief rolling off of showroom floors back in 1922. So I decided that the best way to review a motorcycle with a pedigree like the Chiefs is to take it on a road trip down one of the most historically significant roads in America, the Lincoln Highway. Formed in 1913, the Lincoln Highway was America's first cross-continental road connecting San Francisco to New York City. So I mapped out the 1913 route across Pennsylvania, and I'm gonna ride from Philadelphia to East Liverpool, Ohio, not only to review this motorcycle, but to reconnect with Lance Oliver, who I have not seen in over a year. For those of you who are not familiar, Lance is our managing editor of Common Tread Magazine. He's also a fantastic motorcyclist and a good buddy of mine. It'll be good to see him after so much time in person. I mean, we've seen each other in Google Meets, but that doesn't count. Lance Oliver, the silver fox himself is back. But the best part of any road trip story is inspiring other folks, folks like yourself, to get out and take a road trip of your own. And in order to help with that, Revzilla is gonna be giving away a brand new Indian Chief in our I Rode Today sweepstakes. So if selected, you will get your pick of the entire Chief lineup as well as many great prizes from Revzilla. So make sure you enter at revzilla.com slash win. But enough talk, I have got a long road ahead of me. I'm looking forward to seeing how good this Chief really is. So let's get this road trip started. It is good to be out of Philadelphia. I'll tell you what, this suspension is much more appropriate for cruising down some beautiful country asphalt than it is trying to deal with the bombed out pothole laden streets of the city. Dealing with you know a giant pothole, there's only three inches of suspension travel out back and it really doesn't handle it too well. Now, maybe that's partially because I am just used to adventure bikes with tons of travel that can roll through anything. But just keep in mind, there are some preload adjusters out back. You can soften it up a little bit for a little bit of extra comfort if you want to. Now, the only other downside to riding in the city is all the stop and go traffic. The clutch pull is rather heavy and it does wear out your hand. Now, the real positive there is that this is one of the easiest bikes to find neutral that I have ever ridden. So you can easily come to a stop sign, pop it in neutral and give your hand a quick rest. Now, keep in mind, the reason that clutch pull is so aggressive is because it is manipulated in this giant 116 cubic inch, 49 degree air-cooled V-twin engine that's laying down like 120 foot-pounds of torque. This thing pulls like a freight train. Now, what I will say is that the, the feel of the engine does vary pretty significantly depending on the ride mode that you're in. And this is actually really impressive because a lot of bikes that I'll ride with different ride modes, you're, you're trying to see if you can actually feel the difference on this bike you know if you're in a different ride mode. I'm currently in standard mode, and actually I find standard to be like the Goldilocks. Touring is you're more subdued, really easy to ride at low speeds, and then the exact opposite of that is your sport mode, which will pretty much rip your arms out of your socket if you're not paying attention to it. And if you want to see what I mean, you can actually change this while you're riding. Hit tour, and you'll see it spins, you lay off the throttle, you're now in tour mode. Go right from tour, hit sport, close the throttle, it stops spinning, you're in sport mode, and then just pull back and it wants to go. Now, the one note there is that there is no traction control on this bike, so your hand is your traction control, so just be careful with that. Another way you can control the engine is to hit the uh, cruise control button, you push it in once, that's now activated, you can see it's activated on the dash, and push it to the left to set it, you're now in cruise control. You wanna speed up, you speed up, 
hit it to the right, you want to slow down, push it to the left, and you slow down. And now you just cruise, and you get to see all kinds of fun landmarks, like that beautiful Lincoln Highway mural. This is the kind of stuff you're looking for when you're out on the road. Now, I'm going to keep cruising down the Lincoln Highway, I'm going to stop, I'm going to see the sights, and I'll check in with you folks when I find something fun. Most of the asphalt roads and highways that we use every day didn't exist when the first Indian chief hit showroom floors in 1922. In the past 100 years, our modern landscape has been completely dominated by this innovation, and the Lincoln Highway was the first step in this shift. The highway helped to define what the future of travel would look like, and thus established the idea of a road trip as a term that conjures up a sense of adventure in all of us. Unlike the modern interstate highway system which bypasses small towns in the name of efficiency, the Lincoln Highway went right through them. And for this, it earned the nickname, the Main Street Across America. With plenty of quirky and historical stops along the way, it's a prime candidate for a road trip. And if you'd like to ride this route yourself, I'll make sure to include a link to my detailed rubber map in the description for this video. The reason that I planned this road trip for this motorcycle is because I think Indian did a very good job of incorporating their own history into this model. Now, if you look at this side by side with the Chief from the 20s, you can see the design aesthetic. You can see the similar lines. Yes, this bike is bigger, it's more powerful, it's got more technology, but if you're just looking at where the inspiration for this bike came from, you can see it. And I think that's important. Now, the other thing the Indian does really well is the fit and finish. It's really what we've come to expect from them from the headlight to the embossed Indian logo to the engine itself, which is pretty much a work of art. They did a very good job of just dotting all the I's and crossing the T's with this particular motorcycle. And that also is true with how they incorporated the electronics on here. I think they did a very good job of not making the electronics cumbersome for people that don't like electronics. I'm guessing there's some of you out there that are watching this video that just wanna get on a motorcycle and you wanna ride, right? So you can do that. You don't have to play around with any of it. You can hit the starter, you can put the bike in gear and you can go. Now for us, we did opt for the, uh, the four inch touchscreen display that comes with the dark horse version. I found it to be very intuitive, very easy to use. I didn't have to read the manual first, I hit a couple of buttons and was able to play around with it and go. Now the one thing here that is a caveat to that is the Ride Command app. Now if you just want to plug in an address on the GPS that's in the unit and go, you can. But if you want to actually map out a route or if you want to trade routes with friends or maybe you just want to track your ride, you're going to have to use the Ride Command app for that. It's a free app from Indian, you can download it to your phone and that allows you to do all that ahead of time. But I planned my entire route out in Rever expecting that I was going to be able to just go ahead and pair it with the, uh, the Dash unit but that wasn't the case. I had to go ahead and install a RAM mount and just use my phone and the Rever app that way. Now, what I would love to see Indian do here is make the dash open to non-proprietary apps because otherwise, I think we're gonna get into a situation like we're seeing with streaming apps. If I wanna go watch The Office, I can no longer watch it on Netflix. I have to now watch it on Peacock. No, God, please, no! And at some point, it becomes cumbersome. So I would love it to see as more and more manufacturers do have proprietary apps of their own, make the technology available to all apps. So if I have multiple bikes in the garage, I can just use one and not have to go back and forth. Now, using the phone wasn't an issue. There's actually a USB plug for this, so I was able to charge it as I went. The only note here is that the USB plug was in a weird spot. It's down underneath the tank in the front of the motorcycle. So if you're having trouble locating the one on your Chief, uh, it's right down there. But other than that, it was extremely easy to plan out and map this ride. And speaking of this ride, I have more daylight to burn. I need to get to Pittsburgh tonight so I can meet up with Lance Oliver tomorrow. It's pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah. Let's cut it, let's get the mural roll track in this one. Okay.
actually my first time back to Pittsburgh since the first time that I rode across the Lincoln Highway back in 2008. And on that trip, I stopped in to uh, visit my friend Pat Lenahan, who no longer lives there. But when I went to visit him the first time, he took me to Pramani Brothers. And I figured what better way to honor a ride down the Lincoln Highway than to grab some of the same sandwiches that we had and head off to meet Lance Oliver. And that's where we're going right now. But I wanted to use this little stretch of road into Ohio as, uh, as some talking points for the, uh, the handling of the motorcycle as well as the ergonomics. Now, the Chief that I'm on weighs in around 670 pounds wet all the way up to the Super Chief, which weighs in around 740 pounds wet. So these are heavy motorcycles but that weight adds stability. So I'm not getting blown around on the highway. And I was actually really enjoying being able to rip around some of these backcountry roads. The Chief really just picks a line and it holds it. The only place where I wasn't really having a good time, like we mentioned earlier, was in the city. In the city, stopping your traffic, you can really feel a lot of the weight and it's just a bit cumbersome. So I think the moral to that story is, if you're gonna get a Chief, get out of the city, go for a ride in the country. Now, I was surprised that Indian only used a single disc setup on the front of a bike this heavy. I was expecting dual discs for the brakes, but it's a, a solid two finger pull and with a little bit of help from the rear brake, the bike does slow down easily. And I like the fact that ABS is standard. I actually hit a couple of slick spots on this trip and the ABS saved my hide. Now I had some questions come in on, uh, on Instagram about uh, the ergonomics of this bike. You know, some people remember the first time that I rode the Indian Scout and I wasn't really comfortable on it, it was too small. And my biggest concern with this bike when I saw the photos was that it was gonna be as small as the Scout. I was wrong. It's a much bigger, more comfortable bike for a larger rider. Um, Indian gave me my choice of which Chief I wanted to ride for the review. And I picked the base Chief because this is the one that has mid controls. So uh, that was pretty much the catalyst for the pick on this. And I will say even for, for mids, these are probably a little bit more forward than I would normally ride. And the seat is a little bit lower to the ground than I'm normally comfortable with. Um, I normally like a much taller seat where I'm sitting a little more upright. But before I came out for this review, I went out riding with my dad and Uncle Bob, and Uncle Bob's friend Steve came along, and Steve is a Road King owner, and he hopped on the Chief, and he was like, dude, this is amazing. I love it, it's so comfortable. And he looked at me, he's like, Spurge, you're six foot three. He's a much shorter guy. Um, and he likes having both feet on the ground. He's like, this is the kind of bike I'm looking for. So I don't think it really matters whether or not I'm comfortable on the bike. I think it really matters whether or not you're comfortable on the bike. But I would say go sit on one in any dealership and see if you're comfortable with it. But I've got some hot sandwiches in my pack. I need to go meet up with Lance and have some lunch, and then I will check in with you after, uh, after doing so. Well, I see you managed to find some dirt. Yeah, I, I had it specially groomed for you. I mean, uh, you know, I know how you love that adventure riding. I wanted to make sure there was plenty of dirt and mud around here for you. It feels weird because I haven't seen you in over a year. I feel like I should give you a big hug, yeah. but I don't trust you. No, you you know, they say that the old, the elderly are the ones that are transmitting the virus more than anybody. I mean, there's nobody that I know that's older than you. And there's nobody that you that has a better reputation for harboring germs even in the best of times. So, you know what? Oh man. Well, I mean, so I did almost 400 miles in the past two days. And as long as you keep the distance two, 300 miles a day, it's perfectly comfortable for that. Yeah, well, I mean, you and I are totally in agreement that you don't need to have a, a big bike to take a trip or to enjoy long distance. I mean, some of my favorite trips were on small bikes. And as far as this goes, it's got more torque than anything else I've ever ridden. Like, it's plenty fine for cruising on the highways. But. What you do need a big bike for is if you're trying to sell to the traditional American V-Twin Cruiser right. consumers. That's the way Indian has to go if they want to go for that, that niche of the market, I think. Well, speaking of taking the trip, let's wrap up the sandwiches right. and get on with our ride. I still have to do a quick stand-up for this, but uh, we can eat and then you and I can go ride together. Maybe I'll even let you ride the Chief so that I get to ride the VFR. Okay. You could be that lucky. Sounds fair. So this has been one hell of a road trip and it's not even over yet, but no good road trip would be complete without some kind of a mishap. And my mishap came about halfway across Pennsylvania when I ran out of gas while I was testing the range on the tank on this thing. And I can tell you with authority, you can get 157 miles before you're gonna be running out of gas and stranded on the side of the road. Now, luckily I was close to a gas station. I was able to fill up pretty quickly. And after that, I made sure to stop about every 75 miles or so to top off the tank. And 
Like I said earlier, you should be stopping more frequently anyway on a road trip like this. It just makes it more fun. You should never just be hitting the highway to blast 300 miles down the road to get to your destination. If I was gonna make things a little bit more comfortable with this, I could add a windscreen or maybe think about the Super Chief if I was really planning on doing long distances. But again, this bike isn't about a windscreen. This bike is about that giant 116 cubic inch engine that's down there. And if you equate that over to CCs, it's almost 1900 CCs. I mean, it's absolutely massive. In fact, the only bike that I've ever ridden with more torque than the Indian Chief is going to be a Triumph Rocket 3. And that is a bike that is arguably in a class all of its own. I don't think Indian's going after the Rocket 3 as far as its competition is concerned with the Chief. But who is Indian going after? Harley Davidson. And more specifically, Harley Davidson's cruiser segment, Low Rider S, Fat Bob, Fat Boy. And these are bikes that feature Harley's 114 cubic inch engine, which is laying down 119 foot pounds of torque, which is pretty darn close to the 120 foot pounds you're getting with the Chief. The biggest difference, however, is that this Chief in the Dark Horse package starts out around $17,000 with this colorway coming in around $17,500. If you look at a Lowrider S, starting MSRP is $18K. And then if you get up into a Fat Boy, you're looking at pretty much over $20,000. Now, the flip side of that is true if we look at the Super Chief. The Super Chief is coming in around $21,500, give or take, depending on the color you go with. And that's most closely gonna be you know, competitive with something like the Heritage Classic or the Road King even. Both of which models in Harley Davidson's line have a more affordable starting MSRP than what you're seeing out of the Super Chief. But no matter how you slice it, Indian makes more torque. And that's really the point that they're trying to drive home. But let's take price out of the equation. Let's not compare this to Harley Davidson. If you just look at this bike as a standalone machine, Indian has done a phenomenal job of giving the cruiser segment a shot in the arm. This is something a little bit different, but it still resonates as something that's historically the same. It is a wildly powerful motorcycle. It's got great lines, great style. The handling is really impressive. And the electronics package is there if you want it. And if you don't like electronics, you don't have to opt in for that. You don't have to use it. Now, my road trip with this bike is just getting started. Lance is here and we're about to take off and hit the road. But my time with you has come to an end. So if you want more information on the Indian Chief, make sure you check out my Common Tread review where I go into more detail than I was able to cover in this bike review for the video. And if you wanna check out the map for yourself and maybe take this ride on one of your motorcycles, make sure to check the link below and look at my detailed river map, which will get you through all the same towns that we did. And maybe you don't have a bike in the garage or maybe you need another one. Make sure you enter our I Rode Today sweepstakes at revzilla.com slash win for your chance to put a brand new Indian Chief in your garage. I wanna thank you for joining us for this road trip review of the Indian Chief. I'm Spurge, enjoy the ride. This is beautiful Ohio. Welcome back to the, the Ohio Gateway. I've had time to read all the historical markers. Did you know that almost the entirety of the US production of pottery was made here between 1865 and 1910? I didn't know that.